This session is about enabling translational research in the UK. So I think you've heard a lot about translational research and why it's a good thing. And uh, we today are trying to say how we're going to enable that, how we're going to make it happen uh, across the whole of the UK. Um, my name is Mark Traherne. I am the Chief Executive of the Life Science Investment Organisation. So we are part of UKTI, that's UK Trade and Investment. And our job is to bring more investment into the UK to create jobs and wealth within the whole of the UK, not just England. And so we work with, with our English colleagues as well as our, our colleagues in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. And I think it's very clear by now that this is a major government priority to make this whole strategy work, to really translate uh, activities in research uh, universities through to the clinic and, and into the NHS. And this sort of story was sort of uh, revamped, I guess, in the end of uh, 2011, when the Prime Minister announced uh, the Life Science Strategy, which came from BIS, which is the Department of Business, Innovation and Skills, and also on the same day, Innovation, Health and Wealth from the Department of Health. So showing that we, the government, at least in the minds of the Prime Minister, had connected you know, basic research and university funding and funding through the MRC and the Technology Strategy Board had actually connected that with the key and vital work going on in the National Health Service. Why is that so important? And I think, well, you may have seen in the media that as of Friday, the NHS was uh, 65 years old. And actually, I think not many people know this, but back in 1948, it was always founded as a research organisation, not just a healthcare delivery organisation. And on the 65th birthday, again, it was announced that a new organisation, a new company has been set up to actually it really enable the genotyping of 100,000 uh, genomes within the NHS. So it's really sort of taking genetic research into the NHS to enable delivery to patients. And I think it's very sort of timely that we're here at, uh, you know, a major genome centre, um, you know, to actually, uh, you know, say how can we actually use that sort of information to target medicines and stratify patients into cohorts to make the whole clinical trial process more efficient. And I think, how can we all bring this together? I mean, when I used to work as an academic, you know, I used to work in my ivory tower, and, you know, again, you might have an odd collaboration with a, a big research factory, often behind barbed wire. Uh, and then ultimately, when you came up with a product, I used to work for a major pharmaceutical company, we would then sell it to the NHS. And I think now, actually, we can't work in that way anymore. It's just not efficient. What we're trying to do is get universities working with the NHS and other healthcare providers and working with industry, both small industry like small to medium-sized enterprises and large multinational companies that uh, we're trying to encourage to come back or expand here in the UK. And even more importantly, there's, a, there's sort of uh, the fourth pillar as we're here in the Wellcome Trust-funded uh, campus uh, is the fact that we have a, a very large and established um, charitable sector here, not only the Wellcome Trust, but of course Cancer Research UK, Alzheimer's Research UK here, again making major contributions and patient focused. So it's not only the charities that are patient focused, clearly the NHS is patient focused, BIS and UKTI are patient focused, and industry always have been patient focused. So if we can remember the patient comes first, we can hopefully create not only benefits for those patients, but health and wealth within the UK economy. So how are we, government, and various other sort of partners within government going to enable that? Well, uh, we've got a series of um, very interesting talks. I mean, the first is, is, is my colleague Oliver Rausch, who works for NOCRI. And, and he'll probably give you the full acronym, but in true government style, NOCRI is actually an acronym within an acronym. So it's NIHR, um, uh, what is it, sort of uh, Office of Clinical... Uh, tell me, Oliver, what is it? Um, <laughs> Refresh infrastructure. But I think, uh, even though I've messed up the acronym, I think it's a very important and well-funded uh, part of the NIHR. A lot of government funding has gone into this. Oliver will tell you about that. And we see it as one of the key sources of government funding to unlock the potential of translational research. And then we're going to hear about how some of those uh, particular aspects have been spent in, in a particular academic health science network. But uh, thank you very much for, for coming and for listening. Uh, again, each of the talks are going to be strictly 10 minutes, uh, and then we're going to have a question and answer session at the end. So uh, please, if you can hold your questions till the end, we'll, we'll take them uh, just before we have the final, final talk.